Greetings and welcome to our series of weekly devotionals where we take a look at one of the readings uh, in the lectionary for this upcoming Sunday and offer some thoughts for reflection. Uh, This week we're going to take a look. We've been sort of sticking with the book of Acts uh, over the last few weeks during this season of Easter and we are going to do so again this week. Uh, A passage from the book of Acts chapter 8 and I'm going to read the passage uh, before I begin. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. And now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Uh, This past Sunday in our confirmation class, uh, we did a little game with the kids. We had a bunch of props in the middle of the room, and we split the kids up into teams, and we asked them uh, to invent a game using just some random props from the pile in the middle of the room, come up with a game, and come up with the rules and how you win the game, and And you have to use at least a few of the props that are in the pile in the middle. And uh, the kids actually had pretty much fun and did a good job. They were very creative. And afterwards, we talked about um, the need to use our imagination sometimes and how it's good to use our imaginations. And oftentimes uh, in our society, uh, we sort of poo-poo imagination and we focus more on rational, uh, common sense thinking. Well, this story in the book of Acts requires a bit of creative thinking, a bit of imagination. Uh, There are several elements in the story that, quite frankly, are pretty outlandish. But that can be said about the entirety of the book of Acts. The whole story uh, contains a lot of elements that would be considered or could be considered outlandish. The early church begins by worshiping a Savior who rose from the dead. Uh, The whole narrative, the whole story of the book of Acts contains many, many instances of ordinary people doing miraculous, extraordinary things. And the story involves uh, uh, the movement, the Jesus movement, the early church, that despite its members being persecuted and hunted and tortured and killed, The movement actually doesn't just survive, but thrives and grows and spreads. So it's a story that uh, requires a bit of imagination. And it, I think, reminds us that uh, in our society, we often focus more on uh, rational, uh, the common sense, uh, uh, problem solving. And uh, I think that this even kind of influences our are thinking in the church as well. This story reminds us that our God is 
not really a God of rational thinking, but a God who invites us to consider what might be possible in our world, in our lives, if we might move, if we might stretch our imaginations. Amen.